microplastics. Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm going to be talking to you about microplastics. So we can categorise plastics based on their size. So something like this would be called macroplastic, which is bigger than five millimetres. And then as we get smaller and smaller, we can term them microplastics, which are smaller than five millimetres. So here's some examples in these jars. And then even smaller than that, nanoplastics, which are smaller than one millimetre. The smaller the plastic, the further they can travel through the air, through the water and in our soils. Some plastics are made to be this size. For example, pre-production pellets or nurdles or mermaid's tears, as they are sometimes known, or plastic fibres that are in our clothing, which are designed to be micro in size. Some microplastics can be produced from larger macroplastics that have been in the environment and over time break down into smaller and smaller particles or microplastics. When a large plastic particle enters the environment, it can become hard and brittle after being in the sun and salty water. This brittle large plastic can then be broken into smaller and smaller pieces when it's thrown against rocks, dragged along the seabed or hit with the force of the waves. This will then turn one large piece of plastic into tens, hundreds or even thousands of smaller particles or microplastics. Plastics that are made to be small in size, such as synthetic fibres in our clothes, can be released when we wear them or when we wash them. And they may then enter our drains and enter our waterways and can move through our rivers and streams out to the ocean. It is very difficult to see these small particles in the water or washed up on the beach. So we need to use special nets which have a small enough mesh size to be able to catch these fibres and particles.